So for those of you who are just coming on, I didn't hit the record button until now, and we are talking about the mystical experience. And we just covered the first conviction that a mystic always experiences. And it is that God's essence is eternal, unconditional love. Not just the idea or the thought of that, but the direct experience of that eternal love. So that's number one. Let's go into number two now. This love, the love that is the essence of God, extends eternally and without interruption everywhere and in every direction. Once again, the love that is the essence of God extends eternally and without interruption everywhere and in every moment. The concept of everywhere and in every moment is beyond the scope of the perceptual mind. It can entertain these words, but the experience, once again, is wholly beyond its reach. And that is why we do have to jump off this ship of the world. This is why we do need to swim for our lives so that we can finally, at last, experience this. That's why we come together. That's why we join that direct experience. So this is the second conviction. Once again, love extends eternally and without interruption, everywhere and in every direction. But there's one more. So let's bring these two together now. Number three, therefore, the essence of God, which is love, is all in all. Those words are underlined, all in all. And there can be no exceptions or contradictions to all that is. This is the experience we speak of. It's the only experience that there is for us to surrender into, the all in all. And this allness, which is what, another word for God, God is the allness of everything that is whole and real and perfect within and as each one of us, this allness is radiating in every direction, which includes you. How could it not include you? Because you are included within, not the perceptual mind, not the ego beliefs, not all of the, the concepts and ideas of your identity, none of which in the end have any meaning or any consequence at all. This is what we must be sure of. That the only thing that has any consequence is that allness, the experience of that. And one final part here at the end. Anything that seems to contradict this love, the love that is God, is not true. Anything that seems to contradict it is not true. And anything that is not true dissolves easily and automatically on its own, when we give ourselves to this truth. So once again, we come back to the power of this infinite ocean. You can hear the waves crashing behind me. And if we want, we can stay at the shore and we can be battered around by the waves. But we can experience that power in sometimes very uh, hurtful, bruising ways or we can swim out and dive to the deepest part where there is only peace, where the waves have no meaning at all. This is what the mystical experience is all about, to dive deep. Any child can find treasures at the shore, shells and all sorts of smooth rocks, but a mystic dives to the deepest part and the things that they find there, the experience that they have there, cannot even be described to the one who sits on the shore. So let's dive together. Holding back will never do to one as holy as you. It's time for us now to give everything. You've come far enough. You've had enough experience where you know this. At the in the deepest part of your being, you know this to be true. You're probably feeling something moving inside you right now. Something is shaking 
inside you now because it's 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 being released so go with that and whenever you feel one of those blocks come up to try and interrupt this path just swish it away it means nothing it's only there to interrupt this experience of one but you have come to the point now where no interruption is worthy no interruption is even possible that is the truth we claim. So, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll begin by turning it over to Darla and Alden. I'd love to hear what you guys would like to share around the experience of this allness. You know, Darla and Alden and I, we, we lived for years in a community where this was the only focus, the experience of that all in all. And I am just so grateful for all of that time that we had there. So, Darla and Alden, I'm going to turn it over to you, and then we'll hear from Vicki. Okay, thank you, James. That's a beautiful set of ideas about the core of a, the mystical experience. And there we go. Have we got the bullet? Oh, well, I'll, I'll see if I can speak up a little bit. But it and that mystical experience shows us just how far and distant sometimes the spiritual life can be to our ordinary human life. It's not a a thing that is easy to express in words because it goes so far beyond, like the all in all or the intense love experience that God is, these things are very difficult. In fact, they're impossible to express in words, but by ex attempting to express it and allowing the Holy Spirit to back us up in light. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're hearing that, uh, Ocean. that ocean in the background for a second there and it's it's amazing how powerful nature is as a as a sign of how powerful we are actually i mean I, my only experience with the uh the west coast of central america was that there were riptides out in the pacific ocean that came in on the shore and those can be very dangerous and we have to have a respect for nature just as we need to have a respect for each other in our different ways of expressing the unexpressible. Like we can express it with our mind and it might say, well, where is the love in that? But we each have our own ways of expressing this, don't we? And, it's, and we'll never quite reach it, but we hope that our common purpose will bring the light that shows us where we're actually where we're actually going with our communication. We're returning our mind to God, aren't we? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. So uh, one, one thing I wanted to express is how difficult it is to be a teacher because there's so much baggage around teaching that, uh, oh, is this new teacher going to try and bring me under his sway or something? <laughs> and teaching and learning are actually on the same level. A teacher and a student, they're both on the learning level. But that's kind of hard to express because uh, it seems like the teacher actually knows something more than the student at times. And uh, sometimes we even bow down to the teacher and express how different they are than us. And we need to and, and the disciples did this with Jesus. They, they began to worship him. And uh, yeah, we're, they separated themselves from him in that way. And, may, and just to express this really quickly, maybe a, a way to ex understand how close the teacher and the student really are, on the, and that they're on the same level of learning, is that you could express it as healer and patient. If the healer and patient aren't on the same level of both receiving healing, the Holy Spirit won't recognize what they're asking for because they're not of a single function. The Holy Spirit only recognizes singularity 
And if your function is different as a healer, that you're correcting the patient and the patient is receiving the healing, you've got two different functions there and the Holy Spirit will not come into that relationship. You have to have the same function for the Holy Spirit to recognize you. And that's not a, and that's exactly the way you might express the teacher and the student. They're on the same level, but it, it seems different in form. But we're actually all together in this. That's what I wanted to express. And that we are unified in our quest for God. And we are coming into that mystical experience that James is talking about. So thank you so much. We'll turn it over to Darla now. Thank you, Alden. Thank you, James. Wow, the one mind tracking as we all are one mind is just a beautiful miracle. And that we're all, I know we're all tracking on the same page that, that James uh, reminded us of this morning, the mystical experience that we, we are mystics. We are devotees and of God. And uh, it is a mystical experience and it boils down to devotion for me. And prayer is just so coming in. And for a moment, I, I thought it was just as James said, take that deep dive, you know, a deeper experience for me. I'm always longing for that. And uh, last week we got with Chris and created a idea of a prayer improv circle where we're all going to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's available for praying together. There's just a particular energy in that. We've all experienced it. We have our prayer time, our devotional time, absolutely, our worshipful time. You know, we want to remain that that's our reality. That's our natural condition. And, uh, but then I just keep seeing it expanding. Like today we have, um, after this session at 10 o'clock, we have uh, Reverend Richard leading us in uh, singing your prayers, right? Singing your prayers. And that's all that's been on my mind. And that's everything that I'm thinking about. It's just that deeper dive, that deeper, deeper devotion. And really it's just our willingness, isn't it? It's just devoting more time. We all do that, but we're just at a new frequency now. And James's talk and Alden's talk just completely confirmed that we're ready. It's an intimate thing to share in light experience together and in deep devotion, right? It's intimate. And, um, it's powerful. Bonnie went today and uh, th th there's an early morning one. And we both talked about how the half hour, it was like a second, you know, we were both there a half hour and it was just so quick. Um, I read a lovely quote today and we'll, we want to hear Vicki. So uh, make prayer your inmost friend and worship or devotion, your soul's support. Isn't that beautiful? Make prayer your inmost friend and worship your soul support, your soul's support. And um, I'll just add a quick thought to that, how God so loves us, the three points that, that James mentioned, eternal love does is this, and that is you. And God loves us so much. <laughs> His love is so beyond our comprehension. He doesn't coerce us to love him. He wants that love. And, uh, but he doesn't coerce us in any way, right? He, he loves us so much, we have free will to choose to be devoted and, and worship our creator and just have devotional time, intimate time, like this says, make it your best friend. That's intimacy with your creator, your first love. So uh, I thank you, Alden, James, Vicky, everyone here in this room. Thank you for this new pitch we're at, this new frequency we're at. I'm really grateful. Uh, so, beloved Vicki, let's hear from you. Absolutely. Thank Thanks. you, Darla. Thank you, Alden. And thanks, Brother James. Such a joy. The joy of just doing this all together is off the charts for me. And I love the theme of prayer as the mystic's way because our life is a prayer. You know, Paul said we pray ceaselessly. And the realization that we're either praying to the God of the ego to stay separate and to do our own thing is what we have been doing. And prayer isn't so much telling God how great he is and all the rest of it. 
prayer in the mystical sense is a way of being receptive. It's a way of opening ourselves to the natural, to our natural, to what we are, to the star of light and love that we are as we are created as part of God. So prayer is a focus. It's a way of resting into that. Someone sent me a little you know, I speak emoji. I, I use emoji as my language a lot. Someone sent me this little emoji thing that said, too blessed to be stressed. And I thought, wow, doesn't that say it all? Too blessed to be stressed, especially, and I'll put it practically in a practical situation, in any practical situation, wherever and all of us find ourselves in bodies, wherever we are, dealing with things that sometimes look like a bump in the road. And our focus, that's what prayer is. Are we praying to the ego? Oh, fix this this way and this and that. Or are we too blessed to be stressed by a bump in the road? And that's just a refocusing. That's a, a, a way of seeing, a way of being, a way of being receptive. And it starts very practically. Too blessed to be stressed. I'm blessed that I can breathe. I'm blessed that I, I, I'm sitting here on some kind of little telephone and can speak to my brothers and sisters from all over the world. What a blessing that is. And But as I keep, and all of us, it's a way of living. It's a way of life. It's praying ceaselessly to what is really there, but not visible to the eyes. What is it that's visible that we hear in our souls, in our hearts? What is it? My peace I give to you. My peace. My peace. That's the peace, Christ's peace. It isn't one to another. It's a recognition of a communion. As we receive and we give, we're in that natural state of communion. And like James was saying, the rest dissolves by grace. It dissolves into the light of awareness because all of it, the bumps in the road are darkness. So a, 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 just a simple example. If I think my brother is sick and I pay attention to his sick body and try and do this and that and give him sick remedies, better remedies and this and that. I'm as sick as my brother and I'm praying ceaselessly to the ego. And it's not to pretend there isn't perhaps a bump in the road that looks like sickness, but the only help, and this is simple, the only help I have, any of us have to give is the focus and the recognition that we are more than these bodies. Too blessed to be stressed. I am the light of God's love. I am that love. And so is my brother. And I and it is literally blasphemy. Joel Goldsmith uses that word a few times. It's blasphemy to identify myself and my brother as his body, let alone a bodily illness. It is blasphemy to recognize to not see the light. Doesn't mean I have to see it with my physical eyes, but there is a universal way of seeing. And that's the mystic's way that we see and feel and we are tuned to, like music, music being tuned to the rhythm of love, the rhythm of light. And as we tune to it, it doesn't mean we don't deal with the practical. The practical has a way of dealing with itself. It starts, it starts dissolving by grace or coming into a harmony by grace, not by our ideas, not by the separate ideas of a mind that has listened, focused, and identified and is praying to the body, but to our hearts and minds that are being open and receptive to the state of grace, to the what is the blessing? The blessing is the love that we are. Too blessed to be stressed. So every time I bump into, oh no, what are we going to do about a certain, you know, a symptom of this or that? Oh, too blessed to be stressed. Let me refocus. You know, we are professional miracle workers. That's really, that's our gig here. We're supposed to be professional miracle workers. And the first requisite, prerequisite, is that we keep our perception straight, that we see the light over the seeming bumps in the road, wherever they appear. And as we see, we will do as we see. So if I see the light, I will rejoice in the light. 
That rejoicing is my prayer. Now, I may not go around, you know, singing a tune or two out loud, but if my soul is rejoicing in the light that we are, that's the first thing. My focus is clear. I'll let whatever symptoms be and the opportunities in time of how to express that will be given to us and then done through us. That's why it's all effortless. We don't have to figure out, oh, what should I say? What should I do? Let me keep my focus to bless, to be stressed on the blessings of love and light that we are, that my brother is, and have no other identity. That's why it is universal, without exception, no matter what. If I stay there, what I'm to say or do, it will be presented to me and it will come through me and it will be as effortless as breathing. So thank you for this. Thank you for this theme this week, these weeks, Brother James and Darla and Alden, the fun and joy and sweetness, pure delight of everyone here in our Zoom family and the replay family and all over in time and out of time that we pray together in rejoicing that love is what we are. And love is what we stay tuned to. And it's the song our hearts sing. And when we forget, it's no big deal. We just return our attention to the song of love. So thank you. I love you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Vicki. Yes, the recognition of blessing. That's what this is really all about, isn't it? To recognize how blessed we are. We are blessed indeed to be able to come to this holy, sacred point where we can join together here consistently within that devotion, within that blessing. I'm so glad that Darla brought up devotion because to me, this is the path to be completely devoted to love itself. Because as we heard earlier, that's what God is. We have a tendency to personify and to, and to imagine deities, but really it's just the essence of love itself, which can take any and every form because it is any and every form in every moment however we choose to see. So, you know, and just like I'm, I'm wearing my, my baby Yoda shirt today. If you know anything about Yoda, the force was always strong within him, even as a little tiny baby. And the force is strong within each and every single one of you. And it's just the force of love. So go out and radiate that love now. That's all a mystic does is radiate love because it's the only thing that they know to be true. So there you have it. I love you all so much. I'm so glad I could join you. I'll be back again tomorrow. And we're going to close with uh, something that we have used in the past called the Great Declaration. This is an adaptation of a prayer that came from Joel Goldsmith. So I'm going to put it up here on the screen so we can say it together. One moment. Here we go. Okay. Please join me. I choose, choose to know that I am infinite spiritual consciousness, consciousness embodying body, all goodness, all grace, all and the eternal glory of God. This is the song I will sing, the sermon I will preach, the lesson I will teach, and until full realization comes. This is my theme, this is my, theme. my motif. My it is the silver cord of truth of running through every message I deliver with men. Uh, and men. It is so. Amen, 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 e punto, period. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. you. Thank you. Namaste. I love you all. I love you all. Love you all. Love you all. Love you all. Love you all.